Good morning, light sharers. Um, <laughs> Ella's just waking up her face um, this morning. Um, it's been so good for the last six weeks to be back with you in the church building. We've had a lot of fun together, haven't we? It's been brilliant. So thank you for being there. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed it too. Over the last um, six weeks or so, we have been looking at the character of Moji and learning about him and we've been looking at the book of Exodus in the Bible um, which gives us the story of Moses, an incredible story about how Moses was obedient to God and it showed us God's power in a really big way. All through the story we've seen examples of God's power. Ella, what, what's the one that really sticks in your head? When Moses uses his staff to make the Red Sea part. Mm, that was incredible, wasn't it? And it must have been quite um, scary and taken quite a lot of trust for the Israelites to walk through the water. We talked about that in our group, I remember, a few weeks ago, um, about how that would have taken a lot of trust to walk through the Red Sea. Definitely. But because Moses trusted God, God used him in incredible ways. He was like God's mouthpiece, and his obedience and faith led to the Israelites being set free from hundreds of years of slavery in Egypt. It must have been amazing to uh, finally be walking out of Egypt together as one people. And all of the people had to trust God's instructions, which were spoken by Moses, in order to be set free. This short video will recap uh, some of the things that we've learned about the last couple of weeks and also um, what we'll be talking about today. Enjoy! This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. Uh. But God called Moses back to Egypt ah. to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Ooh. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty and they were mad at Moses saying, did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai, and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. And Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. 
And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. The Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, verses 1 to 17. God said to the people of Israel, I am the Lord your God, the one who brought you out of Egypt where you, where you were slaves. Do not worship any god except me. Do not make idols that look like anything in the sky or on earth or in the ocean under the earth. Don't bow down and worship idols. I am the Lord your God and I demand all your love. Do not misuse my name. I am the Lord your God and I will punish anyone who misuses my name. Remember that the Sabbath day belongs to me. You have six days when you can do your work, but the seventh day of each week belongs to me, your God. In six days I made the sky, the earth, the oceans and everything in them. But on the seventh day I rested. That's why I made the Sabbath a special day that belongs to me. Respect your father and your mother, and you will live a long time in the land I am giving you. Do not murder. Be faithful <clears throat> in marriage. Do not steal. Do not tell lies about others. Do not want anything that belongs to someone else. Do not want anyone's house, wife or husband, slaves, oxen, donkeys or anything else. Our family loves board games, and they're all different. This one has 111 dice. This one is all about building. This one is describing pictures with words. All games have a rule book, and without a rule book, it will be chaos. When God chose the Israelites to be his special people, he wanted them to live the very best way. He wanted them to live as though they were a rescued people, which they were. He wanted them to show by the way they lived that they knew it was God who had rescued them. They were to follow his ways. This is why he gave them the Ten Commandments. One of the reasons that we love board games so much and that they're so fun is because we all know the rules of the games and we follow the rules. When you look at a board game rule book, there is always a section called the object of the game or how to end the game. This is really important because this tells you how to win. The objective might be to be the highest scoring player or to get rid of all your cards first, so on and so on. You can't achieve the objective if you don't know the rules or follow them. When we make the objective of our lives to follow, honour and respect God, we'll be like his representatives on earth. Showing others what he is like and how great he is. And the result? We'll become more content with life. We'll know how to show love to other people. And we'll get to know God better. Most of the time, rules are a very good thing. God is our Heavenly Father. He loves us so much, wants us to live good lives. That's why he gives us rules for life. He knows what is best for us. Share what you have with others. Give thanks to God for what you have, rather than being grumpy about what you don't. Respect the rules that your parents give you and speak to them in a loving way. Don't be unkind to others. Speak encouraging words. In Mark chapter 12, Jesus summed up the Ten Commandments for his followers. He said, the most important commandment is this. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbour as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. If we follow Jesus' command here, then actually following the Ten Commandments is so much easier. It's about loving God and loving our neighbour. We will want to do the right thing if we're living to please God. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you've chosen your people and rescued them. 
Thank you that you have left us the Bible as a guide to living your way. Please give us the strength to follow your instructions for living. Help us to serve you and other people in the way that Jesus did. Amen.